AKA Bullets YouTube channel. Hurry up, now tell us why you're here. Brick Yardley will start at pole position with Cal Weathers to his outside. Row 2 has Lightning McQueen and the 2002 Piston Cup champion Tony Gaswurch. Row 3 has the Rocket Ryan Newcar and Bobby Swift to his outside. Row 4 has the Jeff and Jeff Show, Jeff Burnton and Jeff Corvette. I wonder what they're going to do this race. Row 5 has Kurt Busch Tire and Denny Carlin to his outside. I wonder what they're going to do. Row 6 has the Mean Yellow Car, Kyle Busch Tire and Jimmy Cables to his outside. Row 7 has Greg Beeple and Clint Bocar to his outside. Row 8 has Casey Corner and Mike Yankee Jr. who is underperforming expectations. Row 9 has Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kevin Carvick who is currently second in points. Row 10 has Carl Edwards and Brad Karzlowski. They remember something from the 14th race of 2009. Row 11 has Martin Carks Jr. and Mark Carton who used to be teammates back in 2008. Row 12 has two orange cars, Speedy Comet and Joey Laguerno. Don't wreck other cars! Row 13 is Jamie McCarry and Phil Tankson to his outside. I wonder what they're going to do. Row 14 has Todd Marcus who did not skip qualifying and Moray Clutchburn to his outside. Row 15 has Juan Pablo Montoya and Brick Hicks who has qualified for every single race. Row 16 has Rex Revler and Doug Throttleman, Team Moods brings his answer to Jeff Burnton. Row 17 has TG Castlenut and Matt Karzeth. Row 18 has David Rudikar and another David, David Raycar. So is it a David and David show? Well, there's other Davids. But Reb Meeker and Ernie Gearson would start in row 19. Row 20 has Jack DePost and Rev Rodages, who surprisingly qualifies because he did bad in practice. Row 21 has Chip Gearings and Parker Brakeston and starting in four WHAT?! THERE ARE TWO CARS IN ROW 22?! HOW?! WERE 44 CARS ALLOWED TO RACE?! BUT THE LAST ROW HAS NICK CHARGER AND STEVE MILLWHEEL BOTH MAKING THEIR FIRST START THIS SEASON AND THESE SEVEN CARS AMONG MANY OTHERS failed to qualify for this race and are probably quite annoyed that whoever qualified 44th was allowed to race. Now let's get on to the race. Brick Yardley would leave for the first 12 laps of the race but on lap 1 Nick Charger would leave the race bringing the field back to 43 cars and Denny Carlin would take the lead on lap 12 and lead into lap 21 but Ernie Gearson would be out on lap 21 because he was too tired. Lightning McQueen would take the lead after the restart and lead into lap 38, where Moray Clutchburn would surprisingly take the lead off of pit cycles. But Steve Millwheel would be out on lap 40 because of a broken quarter panel. And Kurt Busch Tire would take the lead after the restart. But the very next lap, Brick Yardley would take the lead. He'd lead for seven laps before Lightning McQueen would take the lead from him. He'd lead into lap 54, where Kyle Busch Tire would push him into the wall. Leading until lap 96, where Tony Gaswurt would take the lead from him. He'd lead for 9 laps before Speedy Comet would take the lead from him off of pit cycles. But Brick Yardley would be back in the lead on lap 106 and lead for 6 more laps before Carl Edwards would take the lead from him. He'd lead for 11 laps before Lightning McQueen would of course retake the lead but he'd only leave for three laps before Kyle Busch Tire would once again be back in the lead. But Mike Yankee Jr. would take the lead by passing him on the inside and keep the lead until lap 153 where Brick Yardley would retake the lead, leading for four more laps before Denny Carlin would take the lead for himself, leading for three laps. But Mike Yankee Jr. would be back in the lead and he'd leave, and he'd leave the field for 18 laps before Brad Karzlowski would be 21st as of lap 178. Where he wrecks Juan Pablo Montoya. Why? And Brick Yardley would take the lead after the restart and lead into lap 201 where another crash happens. But this one is caused by Kyle Busch Tire. And then he wrecks Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie McCarry, and David Rudikar. Why? Lightning McQueen would take the lead after the restart and leave for four laps before Denny Carlin 
would take the lead for himself. He'd lead all the way until lap 234. In the meantime, Parker Brakeston would go down one lap on lap 221. Rev Rodages would also get lapped on lap 225. And the very next lap, David Raycar would also get lapped. I don't know why, but Rex Revler would take the lead off of Pit Cycles on lap 234. And whilst in the lead, David Raycar and Parker Brakeston would both get back onto the lead lap. Hooray! And Jimmy Cables would take the lead on lap 235 and leave for four laps. But in the meantime, Rev Rodages would get back on the lead lap on lap 236. On lap 239, Lightning McQueen would take the lead. But six laps later, Denny Carlin would be back in the lead. He'd lead for 11 laps before Lightning McQueen would be back in the lead. Leading until lap 264. But Brick Yardley would take the lead and lead until lap 271, where Bobby Swift would take the lead from him. He'd only lead for two laps before Kyle Bushtire would take the lead from him. He'd lead for three laps before Lightning McQueen would retake the lead. Leading for 11 laps before Brick Yardley would take the lead for himself, leading all the way until lap 316. Reb Meeker would take the lead off of the last pit cycle, leading until lap 318, where Brick Yardley would lead the field to the white flag, but after turn four, Denny Carlin would pass Brick Yardley for the lead and win the 2010 Blinker 350. And here is the photo finish of this race, where second placed Brick Yardley would only lose by six feet. And the car that would finish third this race is Kyle Busch Tire, as shown in the screen. Lightning McQueen finished fourth, and Rex Revler would round out the top five. Literally how? And here is the top 20 of the race, with Matt Carziff, Jimmy Cables, Kevin Carvick, Bobby Swift, and Cal Weathers rounding out the top 10. And Jeff Corvette just missing out on a top 10 finish. And Greg Beeple is right behind him. And who's behind Greg Beeple? Jack DePost! How did he finish in the top 15? And here is the other half of the field after 20th position. And how did the rocket Ryan Newcar not rocket his way to the front? And Chip Gearings is... Well, he finishes 33rd, which makes a bit of sense. But... David Raycar, who is previously lapped, is the last car to finish on the lead lap, finishing 37th. Meaning this race didn't have a lot of cars that got wrecked out. And here is the top 20 in points. Where of course, Lightning McQueen leads by over 700 points. And he also has over 5,000 points. HOW IS THIS POSSIBLE?! And how did Brick Yardley not move out of 18th position? He came second! Remember to press the notifications button which goes ring 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 after you press it. And lightning strikes back! And that's as if you subscribed of course. And thank you for watching this entire video. This race had a very good photo finish because most races this season were just dominated by one car. And it was not always Lightning McQueen. Most of the races this season, the winner was in the lead with 20 laps to go. But this race had a photo finish. But what this race is probably going to be remembered for is... The fact that 44 cars started. The rule is 43. How did an extra car start? Whoever was responsible for organizing the starting grid. Well, the cars qualified, but there is a reason why it's only 43. Whoever let in an extra car needs to be fired. Like... Lightning McQueen's crew chiefs from 2005. But unlike those crew chiefs, that employee 
needs to be fired because the rule is 43, not 44 cars can race in one race. And of course, I have to mention the obvious. Lightning McQueen is too dominant with a 700 point lead. The Bush Tire Brothers need to stop doing bad things. And how is Matt Carseth not leading any laps? And the 31st race of the 2010 Piston Cup season will be coming out tomorrow. Something that we can hope will end sooner than tomorrow is the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Ukrainian people just want to live in peace and have freedom, as well as have access to a source of power so they're not living in the dark and in the cold. But who denies the Ukrainian people these basic necessities? The tyrant and bully Vladimir Putin, who definitely deserves to be fired as he is doing a bad job leading Russia and also starting an unjustified war against Ukraine. Why would you need to do that? You already have enough land of your own. And we at the Hashtag Gable YouTube channel will continue to stand with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini, heroyam slava. Nechai Shvitsya Daruitsya, Ukraini Peromoha.